Hello, and thanks for joining us for a special edition of Tech 24, entirely dedicated to the galaxy far, far away. Coming up. From cybernetic prosthetics to hover bikes, we tell you what kind of technologies depicted in the Star Wars series actually exist in real life, and which ones are still in the making. Plus, we'll test the toy version of the new droid of Episode 7, The Force Awakens. BB-8 by Spiro is on set, and its features are set to leave you spellbound. But first, let's travel back to 1977. That year, a new film called Star Wars A New Hope burst onto the scene like a ship from hyperspace and changed pop culture forever. The film became a runaway success overnight, later going on to define a generation of moviegoers. But George Lucas's iconic sci-fi series also became a significant player in the world of tech as it raised fascinating new scientific possibilities. Many of the features or technologies used in the Star Wars universe are not yet considered possible, but their concepts are still probable. For more on this, let's now cross over to astrophysicist Jane Kavlos. She's the author of this book, The Science of Star Wars. Thanks for joining us here on Tech24. Hi, great to talk to you. Jane, in your book, you address several fascinating scientific questions, including the possibility of space travel. So let me ask you this. How might spaceships like the Millennium Falcon make the exhilarating jump to hyperspace? Well, one possible method is to create wormholes, which are tunnel-like shortcuts that connect two points in space. Einstein theorized that these were possible, but they don't exist in the normal four dimensions of space-time. They exist in additional dimensions that scientists call hyperspace. So if the distance between two points that you want to travel is a trillion miles, the distance using a wormhole or shortcut might be only a mile. Uh, you could create a shortcut. That means you don't have to travel a long distance or at high speeds to get across the galaxy. You just take the short route. Now, there are a couple problems we would need to solve before we can use this method. One is that wormholes are believed to be very, very small, smaller than an atom. So for Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon to fit through there, we need to do some work. Also, wormholes are believed to exist only transiently for a fraction of a second before they pinch closed under the force of gravity. So we would need some material that would allow the tunnel to stay open and to expand to make it big enough. Theoretically, such material does exist. It's called exotic matter, and it has an anti-gravitational force. So it could help us to open up that wormhole. Uh, so if we can find some of this exotic matter and create the huge energies necessary to punch a hole through space-time into hyperspace, we could create these wormholes and travel across the galaxy in no time at all. So there's still lots of work there. But Jane, tell us more now about the Death Star. Could a single blast from this weapon destroy an entire planet? Well, uh, the Death Star has what's described as a super laser. And lasers can be very powerful. Uh, the highest power lasers that we have now work in very short pulses, like a billionth of a second long. And through a series of these pulses, they can drill through very hard material like titanium or diamond. The target absorbs the energy of the laser, it heats, it melts, and then it vaporizes. So we can currently make lasers that carry several megawatts of power, which is pretty impressive. But to vaporize a planet, we would need a laser with like a billion trillion times that amount of energy. But we don't really need to vaporize the planet to destroy it, although it does look very cool blowing up. But all we really need to do is vaporize a narrow tunnel through to the core of the planet. So then we heat the core with the laser until it expands and melts. This would rearrange the planet in a serious way and probably kill everything on it. So I think that could work very well for the Empire's evil purposes. Thanks so much for that, Jane. That was Jane Kavlos, the author of the book, The Science of Star Wars. 
Well, I'm now joined by Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Good to have you, Dan. Thank you, Julia. Uh, Dan, there are still lots of other technologies in the Star Wars series, but I think that fans, ever since they saw The Return of the Jedi, they've probably been wondering when the day would come that they'd be able to ride one. Yes, we are talking about hover bikes, and they're already a reality. That's right, Julia. A California-based company called Aerofix has developed uh, the hover bike, which is a hybrid of hovercraft and motorcycle. It rides like a motorcycle, it is a hovercraft, it flies up to 10 feet uh, above the ground at a speed, at a maximum speed of 45 miles per hour. It's almost 15 feet in length and 7 feet uh, wide. And uh, as of now, the company states that its use is mostly restricted to agriculture and uh, uh, search and rescue and other off-road missions. So it will be a while before we see these cool uh, hover bikes on our streets, but I'll be very, I'm very excited to see or at least to know that such a bike already exists. And we all remember, of course, the scene where uh, Luke Skywalker receives a cybernetic hand in Return of the Jedi. And in the film, he gets pricked in several places and he can actually feel. Now, 30 years later, where are we? Can prosthetic limbs actually feel? Well, Julia, the field of prosthetics, this, uh, the uh, artificial limbs has gone up in a, in a tremendous manner. It has gone uh, you know, it has made great progress in terms of making people feel like, for example, there's a prosthetic limb created by DARPA, which is the D uh, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency in the U.S., which has created uh, the first, not necessarily the first, but a prosthetic limb that allows the user uh, or it grants the user a sense of touch. So this, this was experimented on a 28-year-old uh, who was suffering from paralysis. So what they did was this arm, they wired it in such a way that it was connected directly to the part of the brain that controls movement and touch. So because of that, anything that the arm touched was the signals were directly sent to the brain and that person could have that sense of touch. Uh, it's not just uh, in the US, but in, other, in Singapore, for example, which is uh, trying to explore different dimensions in this field, they have created an artificial skin, which is basically made of polymers. It is a battery powered, uh, energy efficient skin, which has carbon nanotubes as pressure sensors. So whenever either the skin is pinched or it's pressed against, these carbon nanotubes uh, come together and they form a circuit. And, the, it, and because of this uh, closure of the circuit, the electric current flows through it. Now underneath this layer, in the second layer, there's another circuit uh, through which this current flows. And then uh, through, it is because of the circuit that uh, pulses of voltage are emitted. And these pulses of voltage are then uh, connect, or they, they are detected by the, the uh, neurons and you know the, the brain finally senses that there is some... That they're being touched. touched mm -hmm. Yeah, the skin has been touched. So it's an important breakthrough. Uh, as of now, uh, of course, it's a bit, we are a bit far away from human trials, but uh, it's been uh, done in laboratory. And hopefully this will become, if it becomes reality soon, then it will provide hope to many people who have, uh, who need this, you know, who, or who have lost this sensation of touch. Thank you so much, Dan. To bring to life the space epic that he had envisioned, George Lucas created the company Industrial Light and Magic. Engineers started experimenting with mock-ups and miniatures and came up with new animation, photography, and graphic techniques that resulted in cutting-edge effects for the time. Back then, Yoda was still a puppet. Well, today, ILM has become the standard bearer in the sector, and it's now developing an experience lab. It's called ILM X Lab. The new venture will offer fans a virtual reality experience, enabling them to become a part of their favorite Star Wars movie moments. It will even see specific storylines that the directors may not have explored previously. And we're all set now for Test 24. Dan, you already have all the gadgets you need to be uh, the Perfect Star Wars fan there. Right, I have the saber and I have the mask of the stormtrooper. But Julia, I must say I don't have enough, but I, I must say that you epitomize uh, a true Star Wars fan with your uh, hairstyle. You know, you resemble Princess Leia. Do you... well, thanks, uh, <laughs> thanks for noticing, Dan. I appreciate that. Stay with us in just a moment. Test 24. One of the most popular new characters from The Force Awakens is the remarkable rolling BB-8, an adorable yellow and white ball-shaped robot. Today we weren't able to bring you the real one on set, but we did manage to get you the toy version of the Star Wars droid. And here it is on set. Dan, you've been testing it for hours now. What did you think? What can BB-8 actually do? Well, there are two versions, one which can be controlled by a remote and the other which can be controlled by an app which is available on both iOS and Android. With the remote, you can make the bigger BB-8 roll straight or sideways. And with the app, uh, the app is more features rich. So with this, you can control the way it moves, for example. 
at the same time, it has other features like a hologram message in which you record a message, you send it to BB-8, and it appears as if it's been, it's been sent in a hologram. So it has special effects in that hologram's message. And there are other things, like you can make it roll as well, and you can make this uh, head move that's, that's, if that's the only motion you want. And the good thing is it is programmable as well. So yeah, it's a real fun toy if you're a Star, Star Wars fan, and even if you're not a Star Wars fan, it's a, it's a fun toy to play with. And there's also uh, the official Star Wars app. It has lots of different features. You have news feeds of everything having to do with Star Wars. Uh, you also have a great gift section, I think. Um, but tell us more about uh, the, the trainers feature. What is yeah, that? That's right. It's a force trainer feature in which uh, you're able to play. You're able to basically to dodge uh, attacks from by lightsabers from your enemies. So for example, here. So it's a virtual reality kind of an experience. So here you see a small ball and it shoots lasers at you and you have to tilt the phone in a way so that it blocks those lasers. So yeah, it's... So your phone actually becomes a... A, a shield. A shield. Yeah, exactly. So lots of features there on the official Star Wars app. But let's not forget one last feature, Dan, the selfie booth. It has different backgrounds and different characters that you can put your face in. And the entire team of Tech24 had a lot of fun with it, as you can see here. We'll leave you with this. Thanks for watching, and until next time, may the Force be with you.